Senators, gentlemen, what a beautiful occasion, what a glorious day. It's a dangerous thing to put a professor in front of a captive audience. <laughs> I'm already off script. So, uh, that's good. And I'm about to introduce a man who's forgotten more history than I've ever learned. But I'm still going to give you a little nugget. When Washington died, the lessons to be learned from his life were self-evident to an infant, very young, and insecure country. As one poet wrote only weeks after his death, Washington's, quote, godlike deeds were once the warrior's guide, the statesman's pattern, and the patriot's pride. The tyrant's dread, the pole star of the sage, the poet's theme, and the glory of the age. Now, we don't need godlike heroes anymore. We're a mature country. But we may need to be inspired by human beings, flawed men and women, just like ourselves, who lived through complicated times, revolutionary times, and didn't know what would happen next week and next year, but nevertheless worked for improvement, worked to leave the world a better place than they found it, for a big cause, for the public good. Today, I have the great honor and pleasure of introducing a historian, perhaps better than any other, has been able to draw out the humanity from the marble busts and the false caricatures of our past. He famously believes that history is not the story of events, but the story of people. And very few people have told these stories as well as David McCullough. From the Johnstown flood to the Panama Canal, from John Adams to Teddy Roosevelt and Harry Truman, David McCullough has reminded us all just how foolish and how great we can be. As an author and as a public figure, he has achieved the highest honors. McCullough has received two Pulitzer Prizes, two National Book Awards, two Francis Parkman Prizes, the Los Angeles Times Book Award, the New York Public Library's Literary Lion Award, and many others. In 2006, he received the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the highest civilian award that a U.S. citizen can achieve. His books are published in at least 10 languages, 9 million copies printed, and all of his books are still in print. He's an artist, a husband, a father, and a grandfather. If there'd never been a George Washington, we probably have to call him Sir David McCall. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to do that. <laughs> Lady Rosie. He is, in short, the preeminent storyteller of America. Who better then to give the inaugural lecture at this new center for the study of George Washington? Ladies and gentlemen, I give you David McCullough. Uh, <laughs> Thank you.